Hello, I'm a registered nurse and frontline NHS clinician. I graduated in 2003 with a Bachelor of Nursing Honours degree from one of the original Red Brick English universities. So I've had almost 18 years of post-qualification clinical experience. I've also done some postgraduate study whilst working full-time, which includes gaining a master's degree in public health. So it's from this knowledge base that I approach the topic. In this video, I want to share 10 scientific and medical papers, all which have been peer reviewed and published in respected journals. So in chronological order, inferring UK COVID-19 fatal infection trajectories from daily mortality data, were infections already in decline before the UK lockdown? This paper was published on the 30th of March this year in Biometrics, the journal of the International Biometric Society. The author is Professor Simon Wood, who is a professor of statistics at the University of Edinburgh. The paper is looking specifically at the UK lockdowns and demonstrates that in all three cases, COVID-19 levels were most likely falling prior to lockdown. Professor Wood uses the COVID-19 mortality data to work out the most likely date that infection occurred and concludes that transmission was in decline prior to the lockdowns being introduced for all three English lockdowns. The next paper was published on the 26th of March this year in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology. Effect estimates of COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical interventions are non-robust and highly model dependent. The authors of this paper include Dr. Ioannidis, a professor of epidemiology at Stanford University. He has written hundreds of publications and is one of the most cited physician scientists. In this paper, they used models produced by Imperial College London, and they found that models with better fit to the data showed little or no benefit from lockdown. The next paper was published on the 5th of March this year in the journal Nature. Stay at home policy is a case of exception fallacy, an internet based ecological study. This was a huge study whereby researchers analysed Google mobility data from 51 countries and 36 regions, comparing the data about people's movements with the mortality rates for those countries and regions. The paper concludes, using 87 different regions of the world, we found no evidence that the number of deaths per million is reduced by staying at home. COVID-19 Rethinking the Lockdown Groupthink this paper was published on the 26th of February this year in the journal Frontiers in Public Health. Dr. Joff is a paediatric critical care doctor, as well as a clinical professor at the University of Alberta in Canada. He is also co-author of 50 publications in medical journals. In this paper, he states, the response of lockdowns can be predicted to cause far more loss of popula population well-being than COVID-19 itself. In this paper, he covers a lot of ground, including undertaking a cost-benefit analysis, and from the results of that, he argues that the costs of lockdown far outweigh the benefits. The paper concludes with, It is past time to take an effortful pause, calibrate our response to the true risk, make rational cost-benefit analysis of the trade-offs, and end the lockdown groupthink. Next paper, Evaluating the effects of shelter-in-place policies during the COVID-19 pandemic. It was published on the 24th of February this year in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States Journal. Its authors are five doctors from the School of Public Health at the University of Chicago. In this paper, they reanalyse some studies that purport to show benefits of lockdown, but find the studies to be unreliable. They state... Previous studies have claimed that shelter-in-place orders saved thousands of lives, but we reassess these analyses and show that they are not reliable. We find that shelter-in-place orders had no detectable health benefits. The next paper, Assessing Mandatory Stay-at-Home and Business Closure Effects on the Spread of COVID-19. This paper was published on the 5th of January this year in the European Journal of Clinical Investigation. It was a study undertaken by four eminent doctors from one of the world's most prestigious universities, Stanford University in California. The paper assesses whether countries that enacted, enacted highly restrictive measures prevented spread better than countries that enacted less restrictive measures. 
The paper states, we find no clear significant beneficial effect of MR NPIs, which stands for more restrictive non-pharmaceutical interventions. So that's measures such as stay at home orders and business closures. We find no clear significant beneficial effect of these on case growth. And it goes on to say, we do not find significant benefits on case growth of more restrictive non-pharmaceutical interventions. Similar reductions in case growth may be achievable with less restrictive interventions. So this study found that countries that imposed strict lockdowns had a similar reduction in SARS-CoV-2 transmission as countries that encourage sensible precautions and voluntary measures without lockdown. The paper concludes, In summary, we fail to find strong evidence supporting a role for more restrictive non-pharmaceutical interventions in the, in the control of COVID in the early 2020. We fail to find an additional benefit of stay-at-home orders and business closures. Government-mandated lockdowns do not reduce COVID-19 deaths. Implications for evaluating the stringent New Zealand response. This was published in November last year in New Zealand Economic Papers. This study analysed the data from US states, comparing those that had hard lockdown with those that didn't. The paper concludes, Lockdowns are ineffective at reducing COVID-19 deaths. Variation amongst countries in the United States where over one-fifth had no lockdown, shows no impact of lockdown. The paper reflects on implications for the future, and it goes on to say, These results add to the evidence that lockdowns are ineffective. Another paper, COVID-19 mortality, a matter of vulnerability amongst nations facing limited margins of adaptation. This paper was published in November last year in the journal Frontiers in Public Health. Researchers from France analysed data from 160 countries over the first eight months of the pandemic, testing numerous factors to, de to determine how each correlated with COVID-19 mortality. The data showed that lower death rates could not be correlated with lockdown nor severity of lockdown. The paper concludes, Stringency of the measures settled to fight pandemia, including lockdown, did not appear to be linked with death rate. COVID-19 pandemic-related lockdown. This paper was published in October last year in EMBO Molecular Medicine Journal. Researchers from Tel Aviv University analysed mobility data and found no statistical association between reduced mobility among populations and the number of COVID-19 fatalities in them. The researchers found countries that enforced a very strict lockdown could have obtained similar mortality figures with less stringent mobility restrictions. The paper concludes with, neither the lockdown duration nor the lockdown strictness was significantly correlated with the mortality rates. These results imply that a tight lockdown has been unnecessary. And the last paper I'm looking at today, a country-level analysis measuring the impact of government actions. This paper was published back in July last year in eClinical Medicine, which is a publication by the prestigious journal The Lancet. In this paper, researchers from Toronto collected data from the 50 countries with the most COVID cases, analysing the impact of various different measures. The paper concludes, government actions such as border closures, full lockdowns, and a high rate of COVID-19 testing were not associated with statistically significant reductions in the number of critical cases or overall mortality. These papers are strong empirical evidence against the effectiveness of lockdown in suppressing transmission of SARS-CoV-2 and reducing COVID-19 mortality. There are numerous other papers that I haven't included due to the interests of time, but what I have tried to demonstrate is that there is indeed a large and growing body of scientific literature that is questioning the policy of government-imposed lockdowns. Although lockdowns might make sense intuitively, real-world data is not supporting the hypothesis that they reduce COVID-19 mortality. I have come across no credible publication that demonstrates lockdowns as being an effective way of reducing overall mortality. Advocates of lockdown base their theories on questionable modelling flawed assumptions and speculation. 
I must be absolutely clear and say that I do not deny that COVID-19 can be a deadly disease for the elderly and clinically vulnerable. This is not in dispute. What is in dispute is whether the response, the lockdowns, have been effective at reducing overall mortality. This is critically important as lockdowns come at such a high cost. There is overwhelming evidence to show that lockdowns cause catastrophic damage. Immense harm has been caused. These lockdowns have been a colossal mistake.